There's a lot of waiting around and getting into trouble goes on in Austin, and we hadn't had time to do that yet. We're the Waco Brothers, we're from Chicago. Should we just play? We never rehearse. We probably haven't had a rehearsal for about five years. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's not. It's not really that hard what we do, you yeah. know. He's, he doesn't believe we haven't rehearsed for five years. Five years, been 15 years. Isn't it? <laughs> I thought we had one a few years ago. A, a Chicago DJ made me a cassette tape called Honky Tonk Classics. It's a mate of ours called Terry Nelson. And he sent me this cassette and you, because I must have had a conversation with him when I said I thought country music was a lot of crap. And he made me this cassette and totally convinced me. And it was um, Ernest Tubb, Will Haggard, George Jones, Jerry Lee Lewis, and a bit of Hank Thompson, and maybe uh, Kitty Wells and a Patsy Cline tossed in as well. And it was just like, wow. Yeah. He thought the Meekons were a country and western band, and we just thought that was the stupidest thing. He said, no, your songs are like three chords, all your songs are about drinking and failed sexual relationships. And he's like, you're a country band. And we're like, oh. never thought of it that way, but... And once you, once you try it on for size... Well, it was just very comfortable, I think. You know, when you're like 20, it's probably not very interesting. By the time you get to be 28, and you know, you've loved and lost like Frank. <laughs> you know, and he pissed pissed your life down the toilet. You know, you can suddenly start. You know, country western music, the classic honky tonk stuff, is really, really excellent communication. And it's very direct. Everybody thought we were mad because we had a violin and an accordion, and we were a punk band. The first time we came to the states on a proper tour with the Migos when Fear and Whiskey was came out, it was like a 50-50 split in the audience between guys with Mohicans and leather jackets yeah. shouting, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. And then, you know, the people who heard the record and kind of got what was going on, so we didn't really care. Right. <laughs> I was just, I just, we just, no, no, I didn't feel, it was, no, we were fueled up. <laughs> we were already fueled, we really didn't give a shit, we just thought it was funny. Yeah. And because we, we had no, I don't think we even thought it was, we just thought it was this accident that, People had wanted us to come and go on a tour, so we were just like, this is probably the last tour we'll ever do, this will be a complete laugh. So we got hammered every night and just, you know, it just, just tried to, by the end of it, we were just trying to bait the audience to, we'd go and do a gig and they wouldn't be angry with us, and we'd be like, oh, come on, we can make them angry. 